All right, let's see if we can't do this without hurting myself. This is uh, this is my jaquette, made in Switzerland with the French name. Uh, tachometer, one of several that I own. This one is capable to go up to 50,000 RPM. And uh, so I've got it set on the uh, 10 to 50,000 range. So uh, looks to me like that red five zero would be the 50,000. So that should be 45 right there. I'm not sure if I need to put some kind of a correction computation in there for the wheel because of the circumference of the wheel as opposed to the, as if this was a drill chuck and I was chucking this directly. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just curious if we're close to that ballpark uh, number. See if I can't manage to hold this study enough to get a reading. I don't know if my camera is going to my hand's going to be in the way. Oh, wait a minute, I know. That's where it just stopped. <laughs> it just went kaput. What a bummer. Well, I know I didn't trip the breaker because, uh, does it feel too hot? Oh. <laughs> the, the fuse unscrewed. <laughs> the uh, fuse holder must have been loose and it, uh, the, the tremendous vibration caused it to unscrew. That's a hoot. Try this one more time. So what I'm getting is uh, looks like 21 when I have it set to what appears to be the uh, the 1,000 to 5,000 range. Well, I'm reading that wrong. If I if I've got this set to the 1,000 to 5,000 range, then that 50 right there is probably 5,000, and then this is overspeeded in that range. Uh, so I'm over here. So I'm probably at around. Uh, 7,500 RPM, somewhere around there. But I'm wondering whether or not that's a function of... Because of the wheel? If I could hold this on the end, this would be more... Indicative of direct drive, but the problem with that is I'm going to chew the hell out of that rubber thing. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to stop before I do something really dumb and hurt myself or damage that tachometer. I'll just have to, uh, I mean, all I need to know is that it, it's just damn fast. All right, who was just thinking, oh man, what a rip. I want to see how many RPMs this thing can do. Well, all right. I couldn't resist. So what I ended up doing was I, I removed this. Uh, this is a carbide burr. I can tell by the weight. And this is a really long shank. It goes pretty deep in there. Anyways, uh, I removed that and I just got a, a dowel that fits in there well. And it's got kind of a little bit of a beveled rounded edge on it. And I got this little cup that if I push this cup on there, it should uh, make a really good positive connection 
It's going to slip at first, but it should come right up to speed. That's going to allow me to directly drive the tachometer at the uh, speed of the shaft. So this should give us a true reading. There is math involved in using a wheel like this. Um, this says 10 cm on it, so th they're telling me this is a 10 centimeter wheel. So I would have to account into, uh, I would have to take into account the diameter of this wheel and the diameter of the uh, shaft that it was up against and do a, a calculation. And I'm sure probably in that machinery's handbook somewhere there's a whole uh, explanation of how to do that. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cheat, or, well, not really cheating for lack of a better term. I'm going to make my life easier. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So this is going to be the setup. And I'm going to want to get this back to the 50,000 RPM setting, which is there. And so again, this should come all the way around to the 45, hopefully. Oh, unplugged it for safety. All right, so that's interesting. It's uh, about 43,000 RPM, according to the tachometer. But I also noticed that when I took the tachometer off, I could I could definitely hear an increase in the RPMs. So the, uh, the tachometer is actually putting a little bit of a load on it. So um, this tachometer is designed, I believe, for use on uh, large grinding machines. So I'm um, not sure if that had that much of a factor in the testing but um, it's, a, it's an interesting grinder to say the least I have not decided yet what I'm gonna do with this thing I I think I could I could probably put it on eBay tomorrow and make a profit but um, it's just kind of a neat thing it's it's warm to the touch right now um, It's particularly warm here in the head end. I'm wondering if that's heat from the bearing, and I'm wondering whether or not there's a serviceable bearing in the front here that could use some attention. But this nose piece right here looks like it might be able to be removed, and then there's probably a bearing behind there that's uh, serviceable. All right, so last night when I was down here playing with this new toy of mine, um, the battery died, and then I went upstairs and I... I googled the uh, model number, uh, Precise Super 60, and uh, ended up finding out that, uh, lo and behold, this is, uh, this is, as I suspected, this is not a hand grinder. Okay, the guy who sold me this was wrong. Quite frankly, I don't care that he was wrong, because this is as I suspected. The reason why this is basically a quill is because this is made to be clamped in a holder and then uh, from the looks of it it almost looks like it could be used on a lathe uh, one of the holders I had seen that had sold on eBay previously for this specific model actually uh, uh, looked like it had a uh, big T-nut to go in a um, to go on a, a uh, where a tool post would sit on a lathe so it seems to me like that, that's the perfect use for this thing. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I'm wondering whether or not there's any information online on uh, the care and uh, possibly rebuilding of this thing. I'm just wondering whether or not 
this needs to be lubricated somewhere. There's a screw right here. That might be just a cap for a brush. I don't know if this motor has brushes in it. What's weird is on this side, there's another port that does not look like it unscrews. I don't see any places to oil it on this end. So, not quite sure what the deal is on this. But, uh, also, you know, obviously needs a new cord. But I think I'm going to put this away for now because I don't have an immediate use for it. I do, even if I do decide to do some uh, grinding uh, at some point down the road on my lathe, then uh, I do have that uh, do more tool post grinder. So for now, I'm going to set this aside.